Yeah, so usually I would say that we start with cricket, love the cricket, but it wasn't a love the night for West Indies fans at all as the Caribbean side was whitewashed by Australia after losing the third and final one-day international by eight wickets in the Aussie capital of Canberra early on Tuesday morning, Caribbean time. Gerard Morrisili has the recap of the shortest men's ODI ever played in Australia. West Indies put into bat in the first match at the Manuka Oval in Canberra since the COVID-19 pandemic, but the lineup was about to be infected. Keon Otley hit and two again. fours to get the like inning started, but he didn't last long. The left-hander first to go, a judge the LBW, although replay showed a huge inside edge. Shockingly though, there was no review. The leading run scorer in the series, Casey Carty, was undone by Marnus Lamy Shane's brilliance at point. The 26-year-old gone for 10. And the Windy slipped the 3 for 43 when Shea Hope was struck in front by Sean Abbott. The Windy skipper going to the review, but without success. And the decline continued when debutant Teddy Bishop was cleaned up for a duck by Lance Morris. Alec Athenay's top scored with 32 before falling to Adam Zampa at 5 for 71. The innings got progressively worse with moments like this. In an aggressive frame of mind is... Oh, oh no! There's going to be a run out here. This is a disaster for the West Indies. The wheels are falling off. Another wicked ball, seven down. Ford's not happy. Rost on chase, giving it to it, but he has to depart. West Indies That's losing on. their last five wickets for 15 runs, spearheaded by four for 21 from player of the series, Xavier Bartlett, to be dismissed for 86. Gets another wicket. Australia needed little time to get the chase over with. Josh English and Jake Fraser McGurk were on a rampage from the first over. The pair shared a 67 run stand of 26 deliveries. Fraser McGurk led with 41, while English had 35. West Indies did manage to get two wickets, but not even that could bring positivity to the Caribbean the side. Lynch. Australia reaching the target inside seven overs, ending on two for 87 to seal the series. They'll come back for a couple and Australia destroy. They dominate the West Indies. They win it by eight wickets with 259 balls remaining. Shay, how do you make sense of a game like that today? I'm not sure if we can, to be fair, but uh, like I said previously, our, our batting let us down. Uh, we can saw that for the entire series. Uh, we need to do some, some real soul searching, understand was needed in certain conditions. But yeah, we, we didn't bat as well as we could have in the series and it showed. It's been a good opportunity to expose a few of the players to international cricket and they've showed that, that they can perform at this level. Um, you know, I thought Xavier, the way he swung the new ball was outstanding. Lance came in today before he um, hurt himself and, and bowled really nicely. So you know, it, was, it was nice to see a couple of the guys play really well. Yeah, let me just be absolutely clear. It was a one-day international and not a T20 international that the West Indies and Australia played in Canberra this morning. The match finishing in 31 overs, um, three hours, including the innings break. Uh, yeah, it was a disappointing performance from the Caribbean side, especially with the bat. Lance and Mariah. How do you make sense of this? Because yeah. Shea Hope can't. Well, I was that, that was going to be my response to you. Whatever question you asked me, I was going to be like, Ricardo, if Shea Hope, the skipper, can't make sense of what happened, how do you expect me as a, you know, sitting here as an analyst to make sense of that? They went into bat first. Of course, they were unable to bat out the 50 overs. Um, something that has been, you know, glaring throughout this entire ODI series. Something that has really troubled us here on the Sports Max Zone. So from inception, we were already set up for failure. You know, I did a, I did a count of how many players ended with single-digit scores. That was eight players. The number of players walking away with docks. That would be four players, Ricardo. And to me, I think the... The batting score line tells a story of its own. And to me, I cannot sit here and understand how you train and you practice and you go out there. And I get it. We're up against mighty Australia. But to not even be able to get off the mark is a bit worrying. And then you get the opportunity and you're unable to capitalize on that start. Again, really, really worrying. And... You know, Lance was joking when I said we need to have a serious discussion about it because we have spoken about this for quite some time. And today I sit here and we're embarrassed. Yeah, a, a tough pill to swallow here for this West Indies team. 
And we have to remind ourselves that this is not the strongest Australia team either. So uh, the depth of the Australian cricket is highlighting the bottom of the barrel kind of stuff that is coming out of the West Indies. And to be fair, we have struggled in white ball cricket for a long time. So, you know, while last night's shocking loss was, was, was tough to digest, it's not the first time that we've had embarrassing losses in ODI cricket. Our ODI game for many, many years has been poor. And I'm, I'm not sure how Darren Sammy is going to fix this because the team just isn't applying itself in the way that you would expect an international team to do. And um, I know that they are struggling for quality. That has been a part of the West Indies issues for, for decades now. But um, there are players in here with uh, some some ability that they can build on and Darren Sammy just has to, to, to get that out of them. And I just want to add that the analysis stops at the batting because we can't even judge the bowlers, Ricardo, based on the scoreline that they were given to work with. I feel like we cannot sit here and analyse the bowlers because what are we going to say? Yeah. Well, here's what I would say. Um, none of this surprises me. Lance, I think you hit the nail on the head. The worst format for the West Indies for a long time now has been 50 over cricket. That's right. I don't think we understand generally how to play the format. I think from time to time we have shown progress in test cricket. There is a lot of quality that we have in T20 international cricket for obvious reasons. But that middle format, the 50 over game, we have struggled. You think about from the 2015 World Cup, we got to the quarterfinals, but barely, um, and had a defeat to Ireland in the first round. Um, 2019 World Cup, we barely got there, had to go through qualifying, and ended up at the bottom of the tree. We didn't qualify for last year's World Cup. We will not be at the Champions Trophy in 2025. So if you look at what has happened in the last 10 years, it tells you that we have a problem with 50 over cricket. Now, there is a new director of cricket in place. Yeah. Um, there is a new coach in place in Darren Sammy, still, what, six to eight months in his tenure as a head coach. And together, um, it is obvious to me that they are trying things to help this 50 over team to develop. And importantly, we have to give that time. I do believe, though, that in this process, especially because you are not always going to have your very best players like we don't in, in this series. Um, Rutherford, who showed so much promise against England, is not here. Brandon King is not part of this, and a lot have been invested in him at the top of the order for West Indies. He is not here either. And so you have a number of young or new players in the side, even if they are not quite young, yeah. because Kieran Otley is 33 years old. Nothing young about that. Um, and we've pointed out that we feel that someone like Darren Bravo should have, should have been part of the England series. And if he was, then he would have been part of this series as well. But I think these performances, especially against quality like Australia, will happen from time to time in the development rebuilding process. What I will judge the likes of Darren Sammy and Mr. Bascom on is the regularity with which these performances happen as the team continues to develop and move forward. So if in another year we are still seeing performances like this, then I will say, well, what's going on, Darren Sammy? What's going on, Mr. Bascom? Something here isn't right. But I do believe that we cannot be too surprised that these performances are happening now given the team that is in Australia and given the fact that Australia are world champions. And although they don't have their best bowling lineup, Lance and Mariah, it is still a high quality bowling lineup. Correct. You're talking about players who have shown a lot of promise, who have played a lot of cricket in Australia, which is of very high quality. Both their list A and first class tournaments yeah. are of the highest quality. And so when they come through and play international cricket, they come ready, which is not what you can see of the West Indies players all the time. So not that I'm taking up for the West Indies, but this defeat does not surprise me. And I will say patience and give Darren Sammy 
and the new director of cricket, Mars Bascom, time to see if the measures that they have put in place to have this team improve heading into the next World Cup will actually bear fruit. But yeah. if in a year, a year and a half or two it's not, then yeah, I'm going to be coming for you guys. Yeah, I just think the disappointment is heightened mainly because of we're coming off of that high from the second test win. Mm -hmm. you know? But what's new, Mariah? We've, we spoke with Faz about this last week. Yes. Yeah. We've had so many highs in West Indies cricket from time to time. Um, and then what happens? We go right back to where we are now. Yeah. Mind you, formats are different, and that's why I wanted to make the distinction, because yes. I think we've been especially poor yeah. in 50-over cricket. What? I actually don't think we've been all that bad in test cricket. Yeah. And when we have our best players, I think we have been very good in T20 cricket. Of but course. in 50-over cricket, mm -hmm. it almost hasn't mattered who we have. I just think we don't know how to play the format. Yeah, And you touched on it earlier, Ricardo, and it's worth reminding our viewers that the 2019 World Cup qualifying that we played in Zimbabwe, I think it was. Yeah. Yes. The West Indies barely qualified, barely qualified for the World I Cup. So too when well. we didn't qualify for the next Some cycle, say it was an umpiring decision that pushed the West Indies through. Yeah, and it was reasonable to think that because of what actually happened on the day. Yeah. So I'm saying that when we didn't qualify for the next World Cup, it wasn't shocking because the writing was on the wall. And um, we're talking upwards of six years that the West Indies team has been playing really, really poor 50 over cricket. Yeah. So what we saw last night is sort of a reflection of what we've been seeing for a long time. Here's what I want to say quickly as well. I think the one-day international batting lineup looks too different from the test batting lineup. In my humble opinion, and I am not a cricket coach, I am not director of cricket, but I would like to think that your one-day international lineup should be a closer reflection of your test lineup than it should be a reflection of your T20 Especially lineup. Especially because we cannot bat out the number of overs. It is part of the reason why we can't bat 50 overs. Correct. Because majority of the players we have are not accustomed to batting 50 overs. For long They're accustomed to batting 20 over. Well, they're accustomed to batting six to seven of yeah. the 20 overs. Yeah. And you can score a quick 30, a quick 40, and that impacts a T20 game in a serious way. It does not impact a one-day international game in the same way. And, and let me also say this quickly. Shea Hope, in this series, to me, appeared more aggressive than I have seen him before. And I would personally like to say that's not what I want from Shea Hope. Especially when the rest of the team is being dismissed for single digits. There you we go. need him to anchor. I much prefer Shea Hope striking in the mid-70s, 80s and batting through the innings and we get closer to 50 overs than Shea Hope getting out within the first 15 overs mm -hmm. and we're all out for 86. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only good thing about last night's game for me was that Athenae's got... 62. Um, he, he batted 60 odd balls and top scored with 32. I am saying that because I'm sorry to laugh. I'm I know, sorry to laugh. I understand lads. why you would laugh, but I'm just saying that I like Athenes. I think yeah. Athenes has, has a bright future in West Indies cricket. So the fact that he got 30 odd last night and hung in there for 60 odd balls to me is an indication that he was willing to apply himself. Especially to because the, of what happened with him before. Yeah, to the job last night. So I am encouraged by that. But that's just a drop in the bucket. <laughs> and yeah, it's a and, very big and bucket. And the one game he and decides to drop. step up. <laughs> the one game he decides to step up, everybody decides to not show up. Well, huh? step up might be putting it strongly. Team, he didn't perform in all of the matches before. Well, he got 32. Can we get a break? Yes, we can. It's we definitely water break time. deserve one. <laughs> there was no water break last night, was there? <laughs>